Welcome back to the Week in Review. I'm Martin Falls. We're now going to go to our Thursday Bayou Time. We're going to show you some of the events that shaped Thursday for this week. So let's take a look and listen at some of those things that affected us. It is my pleasure to have here at the desk with me tonight the Homo Police Chief Todd DePlanis. Good to have you here, Todd. My first time actually to sit up yeah. with you here. Uh, Got to tell you, uh, it is storming outside right now as we hear tons of rain, but we don't even need the news tonight because you are going to fill us in on a lot of things that are happening in Homa. In our next segment, we're going to have the folks up with the uh, neighborhood watch situation. But we do want to talk about some things that are happening in the area with the 4th of July coming up. Yeah. If you can fill us in a little bit on the do's and don'ts and what you guys are concerned with in the area as far as the 4th of July goes. Well, one of our, with the 4th of July, one of our main concerns right now, uh, of course, with the uh, current drought, well, hopefully, <laughs> yeah, you know, we won't have that. Enough. Right. Uh, going on, but uh, we, we're concerned with the drought conditions that's been going on through Homa. And it is illegal uh, uh, to uh, ignite fireworks within Terrebonne Parish. Generally, in the past, what the officers have done, we received a lot of complaints where the officers would respond, and most of the time they arrive on scene, fireworks already popped. It's hard to uh, make a um, uh, determination who's popping the fireworks. So, what we would do, they would uh, confiscate the fireworks and uh, we would dispose of them. But this year, I'm asking the officers to be very diligent on the um, uh, fireworks this year, and we're going to be issuing summonses to people that are going to be out, um, uh, you know, illegally popping fireworks. So what I want them to, uh, people to understand is that the, uh, the, if anyone's caught popping fireworks illegally, they can be sentenced up to 30 days in the parish jail and fined up to $500. So not only is it dangerous, it's illegal, and again, it can cause a fire. And uh, that's one of the things I think that some people may not realize. I mean, if you pop a bottle rocket off and, you know, it causes a fire, it causes damages, of course, you could be held responsible. So we're very concerned with that. Um, we sent out a news release that will be extra officers, will be uh, patrolling out and about specifically uh, trying to locate uh, people that are popping fireworks illegally. Now, uh, one of the things we try to encourage is the July 2nd um, parade, and that there's going to be a firework display. And that's one of the things that we try to encourage the public. Instead of popping your own fireworks, go out to the event that's sponsored and, and let the professionals do it. Right. And it's going to be to an extent where it's going to be so much more, you know, than just popping a, a firecracker and such. I would imagine this year is, like you said, a year that we kind of have to watch things a little bit more. And of course, as we're saying that, it's raining. Right. But it has been very dry. Yeah, it's, it's been a problem for us. And, and uh, like I said, uh, generally in the past, also, I think have been a little, we've, they've, they've used their discretion. And uh, I don't think we've, they've been charging people accordingly. I mean, we've been giving a lot of breaks. And right. I'm here tonight to tell the public that. Uh, I'm informing the officers that uh, that needs to discontinue and we need to start taking action on these violators. Very good. As we were coming on the air, we were kind of talking about the Dulorge Bridge situation. If I'm not mistaken, is that resolved at this point? Yeah. Um, uh, from our stand, the bridge has been open, um, which uh, during this time, and one of the things I wanted the public to understand is when the bridge is out, it does cause a lot of traffic congestions for us. And uh, I spoke to uh, the traffic officers uh, on how we can alleviate the problem with the traffic jams. And one of the things the public can do is the intersections. If you can't get through the intersection on a green light, don't get chance it. Don't yeah. get in the middle of the intersection. And that's what we've noticed been happening. Cars are uh, 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 getting stranded in the middle of the intersection, and it's causing a worse problem than we have. Now, one of the things we've done, we've been issuing citations, and I want the public to understand that if you do get stranded in the middle of an intersection on a green light, it's just like running that red light. So you can be cited for it. So we're asking the people to, uh, to be aware of their surroundings, especially when traffic's backed up. Make sure you can complete the intersection. Grand Canyon Tunnel has been a major problem for us, Grand Canyon, Maine. They come across there and they block up the entire intersection and it, it's causing 
some problems for us. So you're asking people to have a little bit of foresight. If you if you know right. that light has been green for a while, you might want to hold up as you get to the Correct. We did receive a lot of complaints, and I will say we are in the process of developing a plan. We, we, had, we met today for a couple hours, actually. We're trying to develop a plan to where when the do large um, bridge is out or the tunnel's out, we're going to kick in a plan to try to hopefully we can alleviate this problem. But again, it's going to require officers getting out at intersections. It's going to require some barricades. We're going to have to reroute traffic. And again, we don't know if that's going to um, be a solution to the problem, but we're trying to work on something to where we can alleviate um, as much of a traffic jam as possible. I mean, we, we limit it to where we can direct the traffic. A lot of times we direct them from one area and we end up with a bottleneck in another area. So it's very, it's a touchy situation. But is there anything else coming well, up before we maybe get to yeah, the uh, neighborhood walk? A couple other things, the handicap parking, we still um, enforcing handicap parking. I know I came on last month and explained we did enforce it uh, and we're gonna continuously do that. So I'm asking people to be aware of the handicap uh, parking areas. And also, we've been getting a lot of complaints throughout the city, uh, uh, Mulberry, I know neighborhood watch groups on the north side of Homa, uh, throughout the community of individuals going door to door trying to sell um, alarm systems. And um, I contacted the parish. There are two companies, uh, Na Nationwide Security Solutions and Pinnacle Security. They do have permits to go door to door um, and apparently they go on trying to sell alarm systems, which that's fine to have a permit. However, I'm being told that some of these salespeople are telling the residents that uh, uh, giving them false information pertaining to crime. Some of them are telling the residents that, you know, homeless got a high crime rate and, you know, they're telling the residents things that are uh, untrue. So um, if I'm asking the public if, if any of these individuals come to your residence and they're telling you information, they should have the permit um, on display around their neck. They should have the permit on display and they should not be telling them information about, you know, the crime rate going up in Homa. Crooks are cutting phone lines. This is all untrue. That's, that's not true. That is very ironic. Now, this has been a couple of months, but I actually had somebody who came and he was new with neither one of the ones you just mentioned and said that they were cutting the phone lines. That and that's untrue. I haven't had any report of that. Okay. They also offering the residents, you know, look, I'll give you a free system if you allow me to put my sign in your yard, but don't tell the other neighbors that. So that's, that's exactly what happened also. Well, th this is information that I'm getting from the public. Several people are telling me this. So when I'm asking the public, if, if someone comes knock on your door and, and they're telling you this, please call us. I mean, we're going to come out, we're going to check these individuals, and first off, they got to have a permit on display. And if, if they are given false information, we can get that information. I can relay this to the parish, and we can possibly get that permit pulled. Very good. Very so, good. Anything else? That's, that's it, other than the neighborhood watch groups. Yeah, and we're going to talk about that right. extensively when we come back after this break. But again, we will open up the phone lines a little bit later in the show, 879-1231. If you have any questions for Chief DePlanis or for Sergeant Lee Lines, he'll be up in just a second to talk about neighborhood watch. We'll get to all of the neighborhood watch information when we get back from this break. Hi, everybody. Well, welcome back to Bio Time, and we actually have moved Chief DePlantis into the uh, co-hosting spot as we have a full uh, desk up here, which is very, very good because this is important information to get out. And I'm going to go right down the line and introduce you to everybody. To Chief DePlantis' left is Mary Lynn Stewart. Mary Lynn Stewart is the Wright Avenue Captain Block. Is that correct as I say that? Mm -hmm. To her left is Ashley Munson. Ashley is the Dumas. Captain Block, and uh, when we say Captain Block, they're going to explain all of this to you in just a little while. <laughs> to Ashley's left is Joel Annisman, and Joel, you're where? Uh, Dumas. Dumas, well, Dumas, Dumas also. And down to Joel's left is Sergeant Lee Lines, and Sergeant Lee Line for the police department, the Homo Police Department, heads up the neighborhood watch. And if you don't mind, uh, Sergeant Lee, uh, excuse me, Sergeant Lines, we would like for you maybe to tell everybody who has no idea what we're talking about right now, a little bit about what Neighborhood Watch is. 
Neighborhood Watch is community-oriented policing, where we go into the communities, different communities. We gather people from the communities, uh, community leaders that uh, form a group and give us their concerns or complaints that are happening within the community. From there, we meet monthly or, or every bi or bi-monthly, uh, however we're needed there, uh, depending on the size of the group. Uh, we get all the complaints that are, that are coming into the community, all of their concerns. We address them. We send them to the proper departments within the parish government, and we try to get those problems taken care of. Very good. Now, we mentioned Wright Avenue and Dumas. Are there more different areas out there in the city of Homa that are trying to get this together? We have, currently we have a total of 20 neighborhood watch groups within the city limits of Homa. And we're, we have several people that have been calling the chief just this week alone, uh, trying to get some more groups started. And the chief, I think, has a list of those groups over there. Yeah. To fill me in, and we'll get to that in just a little while, uh, as far as neighborhood watch goes, you just kind of told me at the break, it's a situation where neighborhood watch is one thing, it's for your local areas, but there's also something called National Night Out. And if you can, we'll ask you, Marilyn, okay. to kind of talk about what the purpose of that is. Okay, uh, National Night Out is a, it's a national event. And in most of the United States, it occurs in August. Like this year, it'll be August the 2nd. I think Texas is the only exception. And it ties in with Neighborhood Watch because it's concerned with crime prevention and protecting the community. Uh, we always like for people to know that there is a purpose to National Night Out, and we like to emphasize it. And if I may just read it, uh, the purpose of National Night Out is to heighten crime and drug awareness through block by block organizing, support anti-crime efforts such as community-oriented policing and safe streets, strengthen neighborhood spirit and unity, support community and police relations and cooperation, send a clear message that our neighborhoods are organized and are not prey for illegal activity. Very good, very good. If, if the two do tie in together, though, as far as neighborhood watching this particular event that you have going on. Right. Is this particular event in each neighborhood, or is it one specific meeting for the entire city of Homa? It's each neighborhood watch group has the opportunity to do their own. Uh, some combined, you know, like several neighborhood watch groups will get together and they'll have one big event. Um, around Wright Avenue, we happen to have a neighborhood association and it's pretty extensive. It covers a greater area than our small neighborhood group within there. We, um, we're having ours at Maple Avenue Park. We expect about 200 people. Very good. But it, it's gonna cover like from Southern Avenue over to Brooklyn in, in a large area. There are other smaller groups that do have their own neighborhood uh, national night out event and they're growing every year too. I'm glad to see. Very good. If Mary Lynn Stewart does not take the bull by the horns, so to speak, and maybe get this thing going, does it even, and I'm not asking you to toot your horn or anything, but does it take somebody to step up to do it? And if there is somebody in a certain neighborhood, is it too late for them to get involved maybe for the not neighborhood? Not at all, not at all. How would that happen? Call, they could call me, they could call uh, Sergeant Lyons, he'll, he'll give them my number or, any, or someone else's number, and Ashley and her group are very good. I'm sure they would be a great help to anyone too. And no, it's not too late. Very good. And it doesn't have to be very big either this year. Ashley, oh, I'm sorry. A lot of times when the people, uh, I get a lot of complaints. People come to the office every day and they complain about different crimes going on in the neighborhood and that's what I do. When I get them in my office, they tell me, look, man, they speeding, they running stop signs, and that's the first thing I ask them, do you have neighborhood watch? And that's how we've been getting a lot of the groups. They've been meeting with me, and, and I've been communicating with Sergeant Lines, and we have able to establish a lot of groups that way. I, boy, I'm going to, and I hope I'm not way off base with this. Excuse me, my ignorance if I am. Is this, is this McGruff? Does he have, is he the? Lee is McGruff. So call I am McGruff. <laughs> oh, you've yeah. been called Lee. McGruff because of it? Lee is Al McGruff and he does a wonderful job. And uh, we, we also, you know, he goes out in the community and, and we, Mulberry School came to the police station a couple months back and, and Lee, he, he puts on the McGruff, he's Al McGruff and he does a wonderful job with it. Very good, very good. Your involvement, Ashley, as far as Dumas goes and, and what you guys have done to this point to get this all together. We, um, we meet as a neighborhood watch group once a month and we're planning a national night out against crime too for our, 
our neighborhood, which includes Levron Street, Nankin Street, Columbus, Hobson. So um, we have one of the... Whenever you guys meet, is it your, uh, you, you guys call the police department as always somebody that goes, or you y'all can meet on your own and you don't actually have to have law enforcement there whenever you meet? Well, I mean, I guess we could meet on our own, but we do have the officers. Uh, Sergeant Lyons comes. Um, sometimes Chief DePlanis comes. Orlanda Williams is at every one of our meetings. She's our council um, woman for the area. and But actually, lately, we've also had um, whoever the Co shift commander is for that shift comes to so our they meetings know they too. Very so, good. Right. One of the so. things when they, the neighborhood watch, and that's what we're trying to do, myself and Sergeant Lines, is getting more of the road officers involved. And we encourage them when they know now where all the meetings are, and we encourage them to attend all the meetings so they can hear the addresses of the uh, residents. Uh, do y'all feel both, and I'm talking about two different areas as far as Wright Street and Dumas, the participation pretty good in your neighborhoods? I, I feel like our neighborhood, right, the participation is good. And actually within the association, the neighborhood, we have two neighborhood watch groups. Uh, so I, I think that's a, a success rate. Well, and I know Sergeant Lons was talking about 20 participating maybe neighborhoods or more at this point and maybe some more on the way but you guys kind of lead by example because everybody else is looking to you especially right now the viewership going you know what maybe we need that maybe somebody will step up as far as uh you know again taking the bull by the horns ashley in in your neighborhood is there a sense of feeling safer just by having this and having neighbors kind of looking out for you? Well, I was going to say that. Uh, Joelle and I probably didn't even talk before, you know, Neighborhood Watch. So, I mean, we've become good friends and, you know, we watch out for our neighbors. And now we kind of know who's living next to us and who our neighbors are. So, yeah. And actually, today, my alarm went off. And I think Sergeant Lyons heard it. And he's like, that's Ashley's house. And I was like, oh, I feel safe, you know, because they know me and, you know, they, they know agree. our area. All right, when we come back, we're going to take a look at some of Friday's news. And then don't forget, we're going to have our medical segment of the week with Terrebonne General Medical Center and then in the kitchen with Canadas. It's all next. Don't go away. <laughs> 